Hello everyone and welcome to my American Football 24 channel I hope. Everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The United Newland Crusaders, 3-5, will play host to the Helsinki Roosters, 3-4, Thursday, July 20 as Finland's Maple League heads into the home stretch of the 2023 regular season. This is the second meeting between the two teams. The Crusaders took the first one three weeks ago, 29-28, in a thriller. However, Helsinki occupies fourth in the standings, just ahead of the fifth place, Crusaders, with five games left in the 12-game season. Helsinki is coming off of two straight wins, having beaten the Wassa Royals in back-to-back -back games, 43-28 and 55-27. Meanwhile, the Crusaders suffered two consecutive tough losses, dropping a 38-35 decision to the league-leading and unbeaten Sinajoki Crocodiles two weeks ago and then suffering a 45-41 loss to the Kwapya Steelers last weekend. Crusaders quarterback Raleigh Yeldell arrived four games ago and has already made his mark averaging 210 yards passing and producing 249 yards of offense per game, both marks ranking him fourth in the Maple League. Running back Seth Rowland has rushed for 701 yards, putting him second while also being the second leading receiver on the team with 413 yards on 41 catches. RJ Long has 36 receptions for 466 yards. Cedric Johnson is third with 23 catches for 344 yards and six touchdowns. In other words, Yeldell has high caliber targets. One of the key players on the Crusaders' defense is linebacker Dante Edwards, who leads the team with 46 tackles, including 8 tackles for loss and 3 sacks. For Helsinki, quarterback Demetrius Sinodinos has had an excellent season and is the Maple League's second leading passer, having thrown for 1,756 yards and 17 touchdowns. His main targets are Johannes Johainen, 30-338 yards-5 TDs, Santa Vekomaki, 21-455 yards-5 TDs, and Danny Kittner, 15-427 yards-3 TDs, who has only played in three games but clearly made his mark. Kittner was injured though in the win over the Royals last week and it is not known if he will play tonight. Running backs Bill Hamelainen, 76-432 yards-4 TDs, and Yusuf Alaytonin, 69-417 yards-5 TDs, are the leading ground gainers for the Roosters and will see plenty of action tonight. Defensively, Helsinki's front seven is anchored by Maple League sack leader William Lytle along with the team's leading tackler Tavi Arampa, 31 tackles. This is an important game for both teams. A win by the Roosters, by two points or more will give them a leg up on the Crusaders in the battle for the final playoff berth. Next topic. The Vienna Vikings will put their undefeated record in the European League of Football on the line on Saturday when they host the Berlin Thunder in an Eastern Conference battle. Last week, the defending champions were put to the test at home by a scrappy Wroclaw Panthers team. The Vikings trailed 21-7 late in the second quarter but would not surrender any more points the rest of the way, as they rallied to win 24-21. While the Panthers deserve credit for their hard-fought performance with a quarterback making his team debut, the Vikings probably should have been able to win that game much more comfortably. They likely cannot afford to play at the same level this week as they did last week, as they face a talented Berlin team that has won three in a row. After starting their season 2-2, the Thunder now sit at 5-2 and in sole possession of second place in the Eastern Conference, behind Vienna. Admittedly, their last three games were against the Leipzig Kings, Fierver and Throners, and Prague Lions, three weak opponents, but the Thunder won each matchup quite comfortably. Last week in Prague, the Thunder won by a wide margin of 43-6, but there were a few reasons for them to be concerned despite the outcome. Most notable among them was the fact that Berlin turned the ball over a whopping seven times, including four fumbles and three interceptions. That statistic against any decent team would almost certainly result in a loss, but Prague is a team that has not won a game on a football field in their time in the ELF, so those mistakes went unpunished. 
These teams met back in Week 2 in Berlin, in the first game of the season, for the Vikings. Vienna stormed out to a 24-3 lead at halftime, as the defending champions looked like they picked up right where they left off from the year before. The teams went scoreless in the third quarter, before Berlin rallied in the fourth quarter, tying the game up at 24, with only a few minutes to go. However, the Vikings would march down the field as the clock ticked down, and Dennis Tasek kicked a field goal as time expired to give his team the victory. If this week's game is anything like that one, then we should be in for a treat. With each team coming off a sloppy win, both will need to bring their A game on Saturday against better competition. Not only will this be a big test for Berlin to see if they can hang with an elite team, but a win here would also be huge for their chances at making the playoffs, likely in a wildcard spot. Next topic. After seven exciting weeks of action, we have reached the halfway point in the European League of Football, ELF. As such we thought we'd take a look at the front runners for the league's various prestigious awards through the league's midway point. Of course, like any football league offense remains in the focal point of award season. Therefore, we'll start off the midseason awards by highlighting AFI's midseason MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, and Rookie of the Year. Let's take a look at who our panel selected. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Theo Landstrom. Landstrom has been a standout receiver this year for the Barcelona Dragons racking up 575 yards and 7 touchdowns. The 6 feet 2 inches sweet has been the Dragons go to guy week in and week out making several highlight catches. His long arms, solid hands, and vertical jumping ability make him a mismatch in the red zone often making big time catches against American defensive backs. The Swedish national team player certainly has been the league's top offensive rookie so far this season. Fans can expect Landstrom to continue to play well as he has a chance to be the ELF's first European to produce 1,000 receiving yards offensive player of the year, Tony Tate. A late addition for the Wroclaw Panthers signed little-known Tate just before the season's kickoff in late May. Since then, Tate has proven to be arguably the league's top receiver, to this point racking up 13 touchdowns, first, and 782 yards, second, through seven games, for the Panthers. Tate has dominated the highlight reel week in and week out practically living in the end zone since his breakout three-touchdown performance in week one. The Western Illinois, NCAA DIFCS, product has not been looking back as he put up another solid game last week with 85 yards against the defending champion Vienna Vikings. Look for Tate to continue to be a focal point of the offense as Bratislav fights for a playoff spot, most valuable player, Jadrian Clark. One of the easiest selections for our panel writers for the league's MVP to this point. The Rhine Fire quarterback not only has his team at a perfect 7-0, his stats resemble those of a Madden career mode on rookie. The well-traveled veteran passer was once unwanted by the league following the 2021 season. Now he's looking like the MVP of ELF while leading the league's best team to a perfect record. Clark has thrown for 2,295 and 32 touchdowns, leading the league in both yards and touchdowns. He is currently on pace to throw for 4,590 yards and 64 touchdowns. Clark has not only been racking up the stats he's prevented turnovers, throwing only five interceptions while maintaining a 66% completion percentage. Better yet, Clark has found a way to keep all his weapons involved throwing touchdowns to 13 different receivers through seven games.